Death Core Dre no brainer industry The things about the entertainment industry You might not know But I'm gonna get you hip So if y'all don't know Cat Williams has been going on a tirade Well not going on a tirade He went on a tirade On Shannon Sharp's podcast Basically exposing a bunch of information About the industry right And it was this one specific part Where he was mentioning about His role inside of the next Friday after next role Which is the Christmas version where his character, Money Mike, with the pimp dude, was supposed to get R-worded in the bathroom, right? By Terry Crews, big buff dude, right? Because he's supposed to be get out of jail. So you have Ice Cube. He's sitting here and he's responding. And it says, Ice Cube says Cat Williams was, was 100 on a few things, but wants to clarify comments about his role on Friday after next. So just for cross-referencing purposes, just so you can understand... What it is that I'm talking about, we got to go back and play what, what Cat Williams said. So that way I can then come back and play what Ice Cube was clarifying. So this is what Ice Cube is responding to. So Ricky, Ricky Smiley knows this. We auditioned in Los Angeles. Yes. I was audition number 201. 200 black comedians auditioned for the role of Money Mike with me. You're saying all 201 of us was auditioning and you had already had the role and had already shot the role in four days? The truth of the matter is, the Money Mike in the original script got raped in the bathroom and that's what Ricky Smiley was okay with. Cat Williams had to take the risk in front of the studios and the cast and our powers that be in his very first movie and say respectfully, humbly, guys, if we're talking about anything else, I have no credibility and I have no pull. But we're talking about comedy, right. where I have all the credibility and all the pull. The problem with Friday After Next is we're trying to make a classic comedy and this comedy involves a rape. And rape is never funny, no matter who it happens to or what the circumstances are. If you would allow me to allow us to do this movie without a black man getting raped in it, I promise you that it will be twice as funny as it would be with him getting raped. So considering that's the real story, why would you bring up that story? 35 members of the cast and crew have never brought up that Ricky Smiley was going to play Money Mike. No one ever saw me put on a Santa Claus suit. We got a wardrobe. To so Ricky, Ricky Smiley knows this. We auditioned in Los Angeles. Yes. I was audition number 201. 200 black comedians auditioned for the role of Money Mike with me. You're saying all 201 of us was auditioning and you had already had the role and had already shot the role in four days? The truth of the matter is, the Money Mike in the original script got raped in the bathroom. And that's what Ricky Smiley was okay with. Cat Williams had to take the risk in front of the studios and the cast and our powers that be in his very first movie and say respectfully, humbly, guys, if we're talking about anything else, I have no credibility and I have no pull. But we're talking about comedy right. where I have all the credibility and all the pull. The problem with Friday After Next is we're trying to make a classic comedy. And this comedy involves a rape. And rape is never funny, no matter who it happens to or what the circumstances are. If you would allow me to allow us to do this movie without a black man getting raped in it, I promise you that it will be twice as funny as it would be with him getting raped. So considering that's the real story, why would you bring up that story? 35 members of the cast and crew have never brought up that Ricky Smiley was going to play Money Mike. No one ever saw me put on a Santa Claus suit. We got a wardrobe. To so Ricky, Ricky All right, Smiley. So listen, like I said, that's just so you can understand what it is that Ice Cube is re responding to. Before I play it, go subscribe to my account right quick, man, because I be getting y'all this information. And the bigger my channel gets, the more I can sit here and do this. 
from making money from YouTube, man. Come on, man. We know what it is. But let's go ahead and play Ice Cube's response. Um, you know, first of all, I just want to say, you know, we shot that movie over 20 years ago. So, you know, people have different perspectives and it's been a long time. Um, I also want to say, you know, every comedian that I've worked with, every comedian that I've put in a movie, I only put them in the movie because I thought they was funny. I thought they was perfect for the part. Um, I tried to put them in a position to win. Um, that's what it's all about, you know. I don't, I don't, you know, I look at <clears throat> from, you know, Chris Tucker and Bernie Mac and Mike Epps, Cat Williams, um, you know, Ricky Smiley, Michael Blackson, um, Cedric, um, Kat, I mean, Kevin, Kevin Hart. Um, you know, all these guys I know are funny as hell. You know, they, I didn't discover them. You know, they were doing their stand up or doing their thing. And I, I knew that they were great and that they could act and that, um, you know, if I, if I have an opportunity, I was going to give them an opportunity. You know, to me, that's what it's all about. Um, you know, far as, you know, specific things, you know, um, Cat was 100 on, on a few things, uh, most of what he was saying. Uh, a couple of things, you know, um, I just want to clarify. Uh, when we bring in a new, you know, comedian, um, we do have them try out for different roles. So Ricky did um, give Money Mike a shot um, but when we saw him and, you know, we kind of saw how he moved and how he was, you know, um, auditioning, we decided that he would be a better, uh, you know, Santa Claus, uh, which was to me the perfect casting. Um, when we saw M Mike, I mean, uh, <laughs> damn, I call him money, Mike. When we saw Cat, you know, when I saw him, he, I just knew that he was perfect for money, Mike. Um, and, you know, Cat, Cat, you know, said he wrote his role, which, I mean, the role was written, but he enhanced it. This is why Cat, um, was so dope in the movie. You know, Money Mike had a small role, you know, about as big as the Santa Claus role, but when we start filming, he was giving us such magic that, we kept expanding his role and giving him more to do because he was on point. Um, you know, when we shoot these movies, you know, for one, the scripts are fire or they wouldn't even do it. The scripts are, la are laugh out funny. But we shoot the script, but once we get what we need from the script, we let the comedians ad lib, riff, you know, play with the words do they thing, you know, we give them a take where they can, or two, three takes where they can go off and do what they feel. Um, you know, sometimes it makes the movie, sometimes it don't. You know, when somebody gives you jewels, you want to uh, try to make sure that makes the movie. Um, so in the movie, there's second thing I want to clear up. It was never... I would never shoot a rape scene uh, in a movie, especially like Friday, um, where you actually see this happening on camera. That ain't my style. If you check out any of my movies, they're not raunchy. Um, you know, we did a movie called Players Club where the subject matter was a little raunchy, but, but for the most part, um, even that, we we left it to your imagination. So the only reason that kind of stuff was in the movie is because you have three villains in Friday After Next. You have Santa Claus still in presence. You have Damon just got out of prison, uh, sweating, 
Craig and Dady for the rent money. And then you have Money Mike, you know, a pimp that treats his woman, uh, you know, like a property. So Craig is always fighting the villains in the movie, you know, from the Joker brothers to Debo. And so we always we already had Craig fighting Santa Claus and the only real way to get rid of the other two villains was to have them go against each other. And the the plier joke was always in the script. You know, it was never um we would never ever show that. You know, that's not my style if you look at any of my movies. Um so, you know, that was never uh discussion you know we you know at that point in everybody's career you know we we would listen to a certain extent but we wasn't gonna change the movie for, it, for any actor you know we we do what we feel and if, if it was a rape scene it would have been in the movie um it was no reason not to shoot it <laughs> but that's not my style i don't even like that kind of in movies um, on camera. And so, um, you know, that was, to me, a little discrepancy there. Um, you know, Cat, he, uh, he wrote a lot of his part because, you know, like I said, he was giving us jewels, so we were keeping the camera rolling. Um, you know, first of all, I just wanna... All right, so that's it, man. So listen, first thing first, man. <clears throat> Subscribe to my account right quick. If you if you take about five seconds, you can find a subscribe button. Go ahead, subscribe, because trust me, I definitely appreciate y'all. But listen, let me say this, man. I fuck with Ice Cube. Ice Cube has always been like a real, real nigga to me, man. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this real quick before I tie everything back. So one thing about Ice Cube, and a lot of people don't realize, even with the NWA, like they try to paint the NWA to be like these horrible people. Because they rapped about gangster rap Until you actually go back and listen to what they was talking about These niggas was really on some Listen, fuck the corruption Fuck the police Because they doing stupid shit And fuck niggas that's trying to do stuff to us You know what I'm saying? Like they was talking about Having to arm themselves because people was attacking them These niggas was never on no Talking about just going out wild and just unnecessarily They was talking about what it meant to be black people In the hood that weren't on bullshit That was trying to stay away from bullshit But bullshit found them Like think about the Ice Cube Today was a good day He was saying like He ain't had to, to Today was a good day He ain't had to use his AK He got to play basketball Eat with the fan da, 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 Whatever cool Right But anyway Back to what he's saying So Cat Williams was saying that he His original role was supposed to consist of him getting R-worded Now of course I know he's been saying the R-word this whole time But I'm going to say R-worded just so my jank don't get flagged Cat Williams' original Money Mike Rose saying that he was supposed to get R-worded Ice Cube is now sitting here saying that that's not true Kinda Because he's saying that he would have never showed that on camera You get what I'm saying? So he's not necessarily saying that something as such wasn't supposed to happen or, or to be em, to, to be emulated as such he's saying that he wouldn't do that on camera that's what it sounded like he was saying but he could just be also saying he wouldn't present that type of content within the movie maybe that's what he's saying but anyway as you see he's saying that you know that that's not part of his style and i kind of you know if if the stances Cat Williams is saying that that's what it was, and then Ice Cube is saying that that was never supposed to happen, and that was never part of the movie, I would have to say I I, I would believe I would believe Ice Cube, right? But maybe Kevin. I keep I don't know why the fuck I keep saying Kevin. Maybe Cat Williams ain't lying because at the end of the day, like I said, Ice Cube didn't say that. That wasn't supposed to happen. It seems as though Ice Cube is saying that he wouldn't show that on camera. Like, that's not something that he would put on scene. Somebody actively being R-worded. You know what I'm saying? But Cat Williams got everybody panties up in a bunch, man. I'm telling you, like, Cat Williams went on a whole full-blown massacre of the industry. And, what, and from what I've seen so far... 
I'm not surprised by it. It sounds crazy because the truth sounds crazy sometimes. But I believe a lot of the things that Cat Williams is saying happen. And it's happening. And, and his and his stances on a lot of these comedians and, and, and everything. I haven't watched the whole interview. I've been seeing little bits and pieces. I need to hurry up and watch it because too many people is already starting to respond to it. And I want to be able to stay on top of it. But my time is getting very slim because I need to make some guy. I need to make this bread from YouTube so I can start doing this YouTube full time, man. So listen, subscribe real quick. But anyway, like I was saying, he got a bunch of people mad. Like I said, he had Phase on Love mad, talking about he overrated. I already made a video about that. Go watch that video. But anyway, he even got Trick Daddy right here going off on Cat Williams, man. Go watch this video. Subscribe bubble right here, man. You know I want you to subscribe, and I'm out.